Captain, that sure is a beautiful sight. Ten of the rats. Captain, these orders came for you from headquarters. Oh, boy, my leave orders. Two solid weeks of babes and beverages. Hey, what's this? And we'll proceed to headquarters, Army Air Forces, Washington, D.C. What do they want with me in Washington? I know how you hate leaving the combat zone, Captain. But the job we've got for you is just as important, if not more so. The transition from training to combat has been too sudden. There have been needless casualties. They've had to learn the hard way. That's why we need officers like you, Captain. We want you to give these pilots the benefit of your combat experience. Show them all the tricks. Because when they get it from fellas like you, they get it hot from the front. Believe me, fellas, when I tell you the advantages of this combat formation, I'm not just dreaming it up. I'm giving it to you as hard as you can possibly get it. So peel an ear, because for fighter pilots, this is the Bible. Sir. Yes, Sergeant. Lieutenant Morgan's airplane is ready, sir. Excuse me, Captain. I'd sure like to stay and listen, but I'm due upstairs now. Look, Lieutenant. In a couple of months, you'll be playing for keeps. So you better start right now. That Chino lounge suit you're wearing is all right for indoor sports, but it wouldn't be much help with a fire in the cockpit. Yes, sir. You don't want to get too casual, Lieutenant. You fly nice and easy, you get into bad habits. Remember, clothes make the fighter pilot. Always wear your helmet, coveralls, gloves, and boots. That's an order. Yes, sir. When you're on the alert over there, always be fully clothed. Keep your cockpit in shape so you can get the hell off the ground in 30 seconds. Remember, every minute wasted in joining up means 3,000 feet of altitude you won't have when you need it most. Thank you, sir. The proper way to get in formation is to give the fellow off ahead about oh, six rings of deflection as soon as you have sufficient airspeed. That way, you're alongside in a flash. Never trail along behind. It takes twice as long to catch up. Captain, what's this combat formation we've been hearing about? Is it good? It's the only combat formation. It's better than good. Better than the V formation? It sure is, and I'll show you why. Now, here's a combat formation that didn't stand the test of modern combat. In order to maintain this formation, three men have to give at least 30% of their attention to holding their position. This means they have only 70% of their time to devote to watching for enemy formations. And most important, for watching their tails. And look at tail end Charlie there. He knows that if an attack comes, he's the guy who's going to get it, because stragglers always get killed. That's the reason for this new combat formation. Four in line, abreast, no stragglers. Let's study it. Here is the flight. The two-ship element is the basis on which all our combat tactics are built. The two elements flying together cover each other's tails, five to seven spans apart. There is no tail end Charlie. No one man is sticking his neck out. It takes about 5% of your attention to maintain this formation. Consequently, with every man searching the skies 95% of the time, enemy formations are spotted while still a good distance away. After a little practice, you can stay in position without ever looking at the other aircraft. But, Captain, what happens when you're attacked if you're flying in combat formation? That's easy. In the first place, you'll see him long before he gets within firing range. And the spacing between aircraft is such that if one element is attacked, the element at the other side of the formation is at the exact distance where they can throttle back and turn into the attacker for a head-on shot. And remember, all of this happens before he can get near enough to be dangerous. Now, let's see how it works. When a pilot spots a rat, he calls the leader, who may assign the port element to deal with him. Now, watch. They throttle back and wait until that rat is committed to his dive about 700 yards away. Then turns sharply into it. Rat loses interest quick, breaks from attack, and dives away. Most enemy fighters are easily discouraged and will break away from an attack, provided you turn toward them. After the action, notice how smoothly the element comes back into formation. We got a lot of those boys that way. Sucks them in every time, because it looks so innocent from the rear. Captain, how about turns within formation? Just a crossover. Looks complicated, but it's very easy. Number one aircraft is the leader. His number two is on the right. The second element, three and four, are on the left. If the leader decides to turn 90 degrees to the left, each pilot will cross over. Look at number two. When the leader is turned away from, he uses full throttle, pulls straight up, and crosses over top of him. Now look at three and four. When the leader turns toward them, they drop down and cross under, all arriving in position at the same time. 
Well, let's try that all over again. Number one starts the turn toward three and four, who drop down, crossing underneath him. Number two goes straight up over top. At the completion of the turn, the aircraft are again in perfect line. You will notice that the elements have now changed sides. They change with every turn, but that's unimportant. Now let's look at a squadron of 12 aircraft, properly deployed in combat formation. The distance between flights is approximately 500 and 700 yards, depending on sun visibility. If the squadron turns, the same form as shown previously is used. The lead flight begins the turn. The flight that is turned toward will drop down and cross under. The flight turned away from will pull up and cross over. It is, of course, necessary at the same time for the individual aircraft in the flight to cross as before. Now, when the enemy approaches for attack, he frequently sees only one or two flights, and in maneuvering for attack, lays himself wide open, as the third flight turns to meet him in the same manner in which the element did in our previous diagram. Always attack enemy bombers head on. The first job of a fighter pilot is to knock down enemy bombers, and the best way to do that is to go straight at them, head on. Now let's say we're flying along at 20,000. One of us spots the enemy and he calls the leader. We fly up to position well ahead of the bombers and detach a third of our force to act as top cover. The lead flight then turns directly into them, still maintaining formation. Remember, you're doing 300 and so is the enemy. Mister, you're closing in fast. Open fire at 600 yards. Continue firing right up to his props then break sharply beneath. The top cover is in position at this time to deal with any escorting fighters who attempt to follow our attacking force. The second flight have positioned themselves so that they open fire as the first flight breaks away. This is not theory. It's been proven in action. I owe so much for frontal attacks. It's generally considered desirable to attack enemy bomber formations head on. But sometimes you will find you're not in a position to do this. Then, the position of the sun becomes the most important consideration. Now, in its next attack, you will see an enemy formation which you're not in a position to attack head on. Now, our fighters have spotted the enemy formation and are climbing to a spot well up sun of it. From our vantage point in the sun, Red Leader sizes up the situation. He notices the enemy bombers have a strong fighter escort. His best bet, then, is to detach a flight to decoy it from the bombers. The decoy flight makes no attempt to stay in the sun but passes behind and a thousand feet above the main enemy fighter escort. The enemy fighters anticipating that this flight will turn in and attack the bombers from the port all turn to the port side. This leaves the enemy bombers with weak fighter protection. So our lead flight now peels off out of the sun attacking the outside bomber section, opening fire at 250. The flight goes in more or less together in order to divide rear fire from the enemy bombers. Notice, too, they attack the outside bomber element as an attack on the center element would draw a concentration of crossfire. And notice second flight covering the first flight throughout the attack. They must position themselves to follow up the first flight in attack. The breakaway from an attack must be quick. And remember, always break down and out. Never break underneath the formation as the crossfire will get you good. Our decoy flight has pulled up and come around in a position to cover the second flight. The enemy fighters were drawn out of position only a few seconds, but that was enough to allow our fighters to hit the bombers. Our aircraft reform on a parallel course for another attack immediately. Mutual support and proper timing have made this a success. Okay, fellas, you've seen that our first attack was delivered head on. That, however, depends on proper position. Now, in our second attack, we were in no position to approach head on. So, we attacked out of the sun, utilizing both surprise and deception to catch the enemy with his pants down. Now, here are the Heinies, with us dead astern and 3,000 to 5,000 feet above them. The first flight dives almost vertically, each man selecting a bomber in a wing element. The second flight is only about 250 yards behind the first. They flatten out behind the other wing section of bombers. Each selects a bomber, opens fire at proper range. Let's check this. 
The second flight comes down directly behind the first. They do not fan out until just before coming into range. Notice our fighters dive dead astern at the center flight of bombers, but before coming within range, fan out and attack the wing of the flight of bombers. This ruins the enemy's fire control, as they have no means of pre-selecting their targets and arranging concentrations of fire. Now the remaining flight dives only part way to a closer position above the enemy formation and furnishes top cover for our fighters. Obviously, this attack is more dangerous and less profitable than the others, and is used when conditions do not warrant more effective attacks. Now we come to the subject of fighter escort for bomber formations, and this is mighty important. Because without the proper escort, our bombers are helpless. Our fighter escort formation is a honey. It's given the enemy plenty of headaches. And here's why. Notice the fighters are attacked well forward, almost on top of the bombers, and that they're very close laterally. The squadron of fighters is divided into three units. Close cover, close cover escort, and top cover. The close cover unit will position itself a thousand feet above the bombers, and as close as possible laterally. Close cover must never leave the vicinity of the bombers. Their job is to attack and drive off any enemy fighters in the vicinity of the bombers. The close cover escort will fly 2,000 to 3,000 feet above the close cover. It is their job to prevent enemy fighters from positioning themselves for an attack upon the close cover of the bombers. Close cover escort may fly a looser formation and have more freedom of movement. The top cover will fly two to 3,000 feet above the close cover escort. It has greater freedom of action in fighting enemy fighters than the other two units and takes a swing at anything that comes by. These three units are always used in escort regardless of numbers. The units will generally fly in the position shown, but may be moved about to best suit the conditions. Common sense will be your guide in this respect. A safe rule is to place your concentration of fighters between the bombers and the sun. Now there's the sun to the port. Let's reposition our escort. Here we see a maximum number of fighters up sun of the bombers, from whence an attack is most likely to develop. Should an attack come from any other direction, they will be seen and the appropriate aircraft will have plenty of time to deal with them. Well, that's about the whole story. Any questions? You must know all the answers. Now, just keep all this stuff in your noggins and you won't forget it in the cockpit. Tomorrow we'll run over all of it in the air. Both attack and escort. See you all in the line tomorrow.